Um, so what I'm going to talk about is how when you come down to organizing your campaign or organizing an issue, how you engage the veteran community. And uh, I'll kind of preface it, I mean, as a veteran running for office, um, being the veteran isn't the end all when you run for office. Maybe um, four years ago, six years ago, it was a lot more predominant. But it's one thing that gives you some credibility. Kind of one thing that came along with that is um, I go door to door and you get a lot of questions, uh, random ones, interesting ones, ones you wish you never heard. Um, but one, I go to a lot of doors in the elderly community and they'd ask me um, if I was married. Um, and you start to hear, because I look younger than I am. And your bio kind of comes it. out. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing, is that they could immediately pick up on the haircut and everything and ask if you're military. The fact you deploy gives you some amount of credibility. Um, to the public, which is something that uh, other candidates don't have. Um, so it's important to recognize that as a key part of it, but not the end all to the overall campaign. Um, so one of the first things you really have to do when you're looking to organize um, in an area is to look at who's actually there, um, what veterans community are there. In my uh, uh, district, they have a naval air station. so. But then you also have the VFWs, you have the retired communities. And so you, you have to get engaged within that area. Um, part of the thing is to do, uh, is the first thing to start is reaching out to organizations like the Truman National Security Project, um, Vote Vets, um, and others who are, may already actually be doing great work in the area. Uh, but also the VFWs and the American Legions and what that, especially on a local level, where we automatically assume that some of them are more conservative it's not necessarily the case, um, particularly when you're, um, depending on the issue you're looking at. And one of the things Truman is actually doing is we're creating military roundtables um, across the nation. So we formed a national one um, to get all the progressive military, military family organizations together. Um, and the next step is to do this on a regional basis. So from Florida to the Dakotas to the nor uh, Northeast Boston, New York, uh, we're putting these together so that um, it's, it will be a resource as well as a way to connect all the organizations on a consistent level. Um, so once you get that, you kind of figure out who's in the area. Uh, but, uh, particularly Maine, 17% of the electorate are veterans. And that's a huge, I mean, demographic that a lot of people traditionally have actually ignored. Um, so how do you talk with them? It's kind of getting back to the values aspect. And by the way, some of it is just asking your current supporters. You may have a lot of veterans in your ranks you don't even know about it. So just ask, and you'll find out. And, and I'd add organized labor. Um, has a, there's a tremendous um, presence, uh, veterans presence within the labor, within the labor movement, labor community. Yeah. And they're actually uh, trying to formalize some veteran groups within organized labor as well, and connecting it with our round table. So there's, I mean, it, you, the obvious is sometimes the best in a lot of ways. Um, when we, I knew one person who was, uh, getting his campaign ready together in Maine and called me up and asked for some advice and I was like, so who do you know in the area? I was like, oh yeah, um, you're one of the CHOP advisors. Yeah, he served in uh, 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 Vietnam and he was a veteran right there. He was calling me up. So the, the, and he actually knew a whole bunch of people right in the area who were vets and automatically built, built this network. And kind of getting to that, you want to form a military advisory council kind of a, a group of veterans and military family members who will support your campaign and they'll do a number of things for you. Um, they'll connect you with the community so you get to or, r work with different organizations in the area. Um, they'll know about a lot of the respects to the military 101. Uh, a member of Congress was launching a destroyer actually in Maine and he kept, I was doing the honor guard and he kept calling us soldiers and the destroyer was named after a Marine. And you could see it on their face, yeah. I was looking around, um, you can't move your head when you're doing the honor guard, but you can kind of look at it side to side. And you could see it on their faces how they'd wince every time he said soldier. Um, and he immediately lost credibility um, with that demographic right there. Because it's such a basic thing that's ingrained, um, but unfortunately uh, a common mistake for them. Uh, the other thing, obviously, when the, you get a council together, they can advise you um, on the customs, but as well as 
uh, more tangible things, like they can write an op-ed, a letter to the editor, other things supporting this candidate for that demographic and target it that way. Um, there are some areas where they have specific um, newsletters that go around military communities, others. Um, so it, there's all kinds of ways to really work um, connecting through that. Um, and really, it's not too hard, particularly if you have certain issues that we traditionally care about anyway. Um, and a lot of it is just organizing one-on-one, -on -one. picking a couple chairs, getting them started, do a weekly call. But then what happens is, you know, when Sarah Palin gets up and talks about national security stuff, well, we don't believe her. A big portion of America believes her, and she has zero credibility. When progressives get up, they need to have a panel of veterans, unless they're a veteran themselves, standing behind them to talk about national security. It's a sad state, but we've, and we've got to get past it. But until we get past it, here's an opportunity to get those folks behind you, give you the credibility, or let them say it themselves. Let them write an op-ed in the in the, the, the Sandusky paper on climate change, and all of a sudden, it, 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 can, it can change some change the minds. I mean, because they, when they can line up and say, well, unfortunately, the conservatives, they messed up in Iraq, they didn't give us the equipment we needed, they messed up in Walter Reed, and they did not support the GI Bill passing for the 21st century education. A whole list of things um, that we as progressives and Democrats do support. Um, so inherently, we are actually supporting the military much more, but most, a lot of people don't realize that. And when you have veterans saying that with you as the candidate, it's an extremely powerful message. Um, there's some more basic things you can do more. Go to the military bases, tour it, ask to learn about it. Um, welcome home ceremonies are always important. It's very non-political to kind of just welcome, greet, just make sure you're there supporting the troops when they come home. Um, if there's a major promotion in the area, um, Sometimes it's good if they put a release out on that to attend that. Um, and obviously doing care packages. Uh, one of the uh, groups who sent me care packages actually was the uh, Students for Peace in the area. And they sent a bunch of, you know, go figure, granola. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, and I was debating whether or not to take off the little peace symbols before I gave it to my, the rest of my platoon. I did in the end, and then they were like, this is the best granola we've ever had. <laughs> um, and I, I, then I decided, okay, I'm going to tell them where it came from. And it was interesting to see, though, instead of reacting negatively to that, they reacted in a very positive. They like, were them really happy they sent that, because they appreciate the work that we're doing, regardless of what they thought of the organization. So doing these, connect, even nonpartisan things, and connecting with people in that level makes a real difference. Um, and it shows to the community you care about the service members. Um, the other thing is, if there's a specific issue that aligns with the campaign, one of them for me is our dependence on oil and climate change. And that's one of a, a large initiative that Truman is doing called Operation Free. Um, and it aligns really well with my campaign, and I'm sure other uh, progressives running, is we don't want to be dependent on others for uh, oil. We send a billion dollars overseas every single day. And a lot of the veterans themselves have own personal stories that can back that up. Uh, for instance, when I was deployed in 2006 um, in and around Fallujah, we came across of tra um, literally trucks, tractors, and cars, bumper to bumper, in about 140, 30 degree heat. Actually, I cooked a pizza in that at one point. It was actually kind of fun. But what, we came to the front of the line and began to realize they were waiting for gasoline and diesel. And so it really struck me how our dependence on the single source of fuel was crippling this country and likewise making us very vulnerable. Um, and you then relate it back to the area you're in. So in Maine, 80% of the households are dependent on heating oil to survive the winter. And it's not like Vegas where it's about 110. Um, Maine in the winter is um, negative 10. So it's a real tangible effort. People understand and realize the connection to that, that we don't want to be lining up to Iran and Saudi Arabia for oil that we're dependent on.